it's a tremendous honor once again for me to be a part of this Barbados Caribbean diaspora event to bring on the spring from our colleagues in Canada and to share this program with the most honorable uh, Sandra Mason, our distinguished president of our, of our republic. This is, this is a moment indeed in which Barbados is expected to provide global leadership. This is a moment uh, crafted in the history of Barbadian development that has brought us here to provide the world with, with a vision to the future, to be a critical part of the shaping of this 21st century and a small nation, but large in terms of the historical canvas, large in terms of the greater span and the arc of history to be at the center of a discourse in which it must be courageous, confident and, and committed. The modern world as we know it today is unfolding. What we have called modernity, this world in which we have all emerged from colonialism to nationhood, this world is crumbling before our very eyes. The old philosophies that have informed the modern world, those philosophies have now deemed to be bankrupt, uh, to have no sustainability. And the world is looking into the deep barrel of this 21st century with hope and with commitment to a new world order. Let's just look at some of those old philosophies that have come back to shape this 21st century. That old modernity was built on slavery. It was built on philosophies that did not, that did not support the concept of justice and equality. But here we are now looking to a vision of the future and with justice, equality, the celebration of the diversity of the human family, the celebration of a world in which all cultures are celebrated for their fundamental equality and the diversity of the human dignity called forth. This is the fundamental philosophy. This is the emergent truth of this 21st century. If you take, for example, the issues around public health, the world is demanding equality for all, equal access to healthcare. If we look at the concept of climate change, what the world is saying is that only humanity acting together, only humanity at its finest, acting together as one can resolve the existential threat facing us on planet Earth. All of this is now before us. A new reality is emerging. Notions that might is right is now wrong. The notion that all cultures are equal on a horizontal and not a vertical structure is now being celebrated. And Barbados is a critical part of this history and this future as the world is looking for a new path, for new philosophies. This is where we are. This is why Barbados has been called upon. Let us ask the question, what is Barbados? We know, of course, Barbados is our Caribbean home. It's a nation. It's a republic. This we know. But when we look at the historical construction of what Barbados is, then we get closer to an understanding as to why Barbados has a duty to lead this 21st century. First of all, we know that Barbados is the home to the most unjust society ever constructed. We know that Barbados is where this crime against humanity of creating a philosophy, a constitution, an economic and social order in which black people are classified as not human, but property, chattel, real estate. 
we know that Barbados is the first society built upon that principle. It became known as the Barbados way. It was a Barbados model. Between 1640 and 1660, this experiment and converting human beings into property in order to get involved in large-scale agricultural production and to generate wealth out of that principle, it was the Barbados model. This is where the English converted Barbados into a laboratory of unfreedom. This is where the English created in Barbados a model that was to become the norm across the hemisphere. From Barbados, this model was exported to Jamaica, to, to South Carolina, uh, Virginia, uh, and it became known as the Barbados way. But Barbados was also the place where a government enacted legislation what became known as the first slave code. That slave code passed in the Barbados Parliament, approved by the British Parliament, built the first society in the Americas, in the modern world, in which all Africans are deemed to be non-human. The Barbados way. Proceeding, therefore, to build a society on the fundamental principle that freedom, justice, are to involve all other races other than the African race. And that the African race was targeted for this specific constitutional structure, an entire economy built on the backs of African people. We are the survivors. We are the survivors of that first Black Holocaust, Barbados. We are also the custodians of two very important social formations. That Barbados became the first country in the entire Americas in which black people became the majority. By 1660, black people were the majority in Barbados. And we have seen that trend clearly a decade earlier. Barbados also became the first society a hundred years later in which women became the majority. So here is Barbados, the first slave society, the first black majority society, the first female majority society. Women have been the majority in Barbados for 200 years. This is why Barbados must lead. This is why in this 21st century, history has positioned Barbados to lead. It is no doubt that as early as 1675, when the, the Africans and Barbados planned the first freedom strategy to abolish slavery, to abolish imperial rule, to abolish the monarchy of Britain with its control over sovereignty. This is where the Africans and Barbados in 1675 under the leadership of Cuffey, planned for the Cuffey Kingdom, in which Cuffey was going to be made King of Barbados on the 12th of June, 1675. The first vision and plan for an African King to rule Barbados. These are the reasons why history has placed Barbadians in a position to provide leadership. And we have to focus on the question of the role of our women who have been 
the gender majority for over 200 years. Barbados is also the place where a literature evolves, a literature evolves, written by slave owners, focusing on the economics of breeding slaves. Barbados slave owners wrote a manuscript in 1786 explaining how to breed slaves, how to exploit the fertility and the maternity of African women, because in their opinion, it was now cheaper to breed their own slaves than to buy slaves from Africa. And thus, this economic literature to buy or to breed that focus on the black women's fertility, which shows the depth to which black women were subjected to the worst and most evil part of slavery, to take their maternal instincts and their fertility and convert them into market profit and loss assets. This is the depth of the unfreedom of which I speak. And now Barbados, led by women, turning that history upon its head, bringing back to Barbados the dignity of our women having been degraded into the depth of hell by slavery. This is why Barbados must lead in the creation of freedom that Barbados must position itself from being the most unfree society in history to become the freest society in the future. This is the project that Barbadians must now lead to create a society that the world will say, this nation called Barbados is now the freest society imagined by humanity because it was historically the most unfree society imagined by humanity. We are going to flip this history on its head, turn this history around, convert this hell into the heaven for the 21st century. We are blessed to have a Prime Minister, Prime Minister Mayor Motley, who understands this history, who understands the logic within Barbadian history, this quest for democracy, this quest for freedom, this quest to set an example to the world on what the just society will look like in the future. Barbados has this legitimacy. A Barbados leader has this legitimacy to speak because she is speaking against the background of this history and projecting into the future. The concept of the just society had always been a part of Barbadian democracy. Our founding father, the right excellent Erubara, spoke about the just society. And we are now implementing step by step by step. And look at what Prime Minister Motley has done. She established a pantheon of national heroes. In her role as Minister of Culture, she established this parliamentary pantheon of national heroes. Then she removed Nelson from our parliamentary square, removed the abomination from the Freedom Park, which we call Parliamentary Hero Circle. Then she established the Freedom Park a celebration of those who rose up against colonialism under the stimulating vision of the right excellent Clement Payne. Now she has taken us out of the clutches of the monarchy of Britain, the monarchy that had built colonization, the monarchy that had invested in slavery, the monarchy, the monarchy that had 
profited from slave trading. The monarchy that had built the first slave trade company, the Royal African Company, set up and designed in 1672 to bring 4,000 Africans per year out to Barbados, the Leeward Islands and Jamaica. A royal family that stood in full support of slave owners and slave trading because it too was a part of that structure. Our Prime Minister has taken out us out of the clutches of that history and has put us on a path to own our history, to own our future, to empower us to act, commitment to ourselves, that we, the people of Barbados, must have confidence, that we Caribbean people must have self-confidence, we must have courage, and we must have the commitment to justice, to democracy and freedom, and to stand strong in support of these values. Furthermore, furthermore, she has recommitted our nation that the education of all citizens from, from primary to tertiary, to build the knowledge economy, to build a competitive global economy. Barbados, in order to be globally competitive, must be educated. All must be educated to the maximum of their capacity because all we have in Barbados is the human capital, the intellect of our people. And you have to invest in that intellect in order to make every individual, every family, and therefore the nation competitive. Committed her government to that investment in the education of every citizen so that we can enfranchise ourselves and we can make our nation competitive. That is democracy at its best. That is democracy at its finest. That is the preparation for the free society. Not only the just society, but beyond the just society, to the free society. This, this commitment is understood. Barbados is in a position to provide this global leadership, to set these standards of freedom, of justice, of equality for all. Because Barbados knows from whence it came. We know the journey to justice. We know the pain of the plantation in a way that no other people have experienced. Because Barbados was the laboratory. It was the experimental ground of the evil of slavery, of the extraction of freedom from the consciousness of everyone of African descent. But Barbados must lead because the people of Barbados were never broken. It is no coincidence, it is no coincidence that after the Haitian people rose up, overthrew slavery and claimed their freedom and declared the Republic of Haiti in 1804, it is no coincidence that the next rebellion in the Americas, the next rebellion in the Caribbean was Barbados. The Bussa Rebellion, the War of General Bussa in 1816, that the people of Barbados were the first to endorse Toussaint Louverture. The people of Barbados were the first to endorse the revolution of freedom. The people of Barbados were the first to stand up and said, Haiti has led the way and we have the courage to follow in the quest for freedom. That is not a coincidence. Neither is it a coincidence that those people, especially the female intellectual of that rebellion, Nanny Greg, it was Nanny Greg who, before she went to the gallows, it was Nanny Greg who said, if we want freedom, we have to stand up for it. If we want to have freedom, we must follow Toussaint Louverture in Santo Domingue. We must follow Toussaint Louverture if we want freedom. Not a coincidence 
that Barbados of all the societies with enslaved people was the one that stood up first after Toussaint. That we must think about. The point here is that we have always been committed to freedom in the midst of our enslavement, in the midst of our colonization. The people of Barbados have always joined with the people of the Caribbean and providing leadership at the critical moment. So here we are today, looking into the 21st century against the background of these 300 years with a prime minister who understands all of these relationships and is putting the people of Barbados in a position to provide leadership for themselves and by extension setting an example to the wider world. This is what history has done for us. It has, it has bequeathed to us this responsibility that since you were the home of slavery, you should now become the beacon of freedom. This is the duty that history has given us. We, the people of Barbados, who were first in this demonic structure called plantation slavery, the first victims of this chattelization, the first to be subject to the slave code that called us property non-human and real estate, that history has said to us, you have experienced the depth of hell. Now it is your duty to celebrate the blessings of humanity, freedom, justice, the free society. This is why Barbados must lead. And this is why at this moment in time we have a president and a right excellent the most honorable Sandra Mason standing side by side with our prime minister, the two of the matriarchs of the future, matriarchs of post-modernity, looking into the distance and providing the action for today. We have to give thanks to our ancestors for keeping us clearly minded on the significance of these things. Here we are then. This is my thesis. History has called upon this small nation to lead. It was always a small society, but with slavery, it became the finance capital of the Americas. It became the first finance capital, supplying finance to Virginia, Carolina, Pennsylvania, providing a capital for Jamaica, to, to, to all the places that wanted to build their economies on slavery. Barbados was providing the management. It was, it was providing the capital. It exported management, it exported capital to enable slave owners to thrive. Barbados was the finance center of that entire colonial world, the first center of big finance. Here we are now, still a center of finance, still a small state, but still a place that the region and the world looks to for management, looks to for effective leadership, looks to for access to the mentality which says efficiency is important, but flip the story up on its head. Barbados is now going to be the center, not only for finance, but the center for freedom. Freedom and finance. The Barbados model going forward. History has brought us hither. History has placed us in the hands of two magnificent female citizens providing against the background of history the vision for the future. It's a compelling thesis. It's a thesis supported by powerful evidentiary basis. It's a special moment for a special society in this 21st century in which we are looking to a horizontal, a horizontal civilization. All races, all ethnicities, 
not stacked up vertically, but on a platform of equality, diversity with equality. That's the model. That's the world that Barbados will now champion. A world of justice, a world of freedom. Humanity celebrating its diversity. This is a shared vision that will help us to save our planet Earth in this 21st century. Thank you.